Hi guys, welcome to another episode of Dallas TV. I'm your girl Dallas, as usual. And here on the couch, we always have a fantastic celebrity, your fave. And today is no different. Uh, I have with me here, we are now besties by the way, mind you. <laughs> uh, I'm talking about no other person, but your favorite actor, her own fine boy looking smooth. No other person, but Daniel Etum Etum. <laughs> That's a tired face in case you guys are wondering. <laughs> I literally had to drag him <laughs> from set. How are you doing? I'm great. How are you? I'm fine. Look on the phone. <laughs> oh, look on the phone, Jesse. Okay, guys. Um, as usual, like I said, we bring them here. It's always easy to get them here, and then we get to just chit chat about so many things. And I don't want to already feel like I don't know you. I know you already. <laughs> like I said, he's my bestie. Ask him. I'm not famous. Yeah, Take the waiters. Yeah, she's my new bestie. O'Shea. Blown. <laughs> okay, so uh, Daniel, how are you doing? What's good? How are you doing? I'm good. Uh, I'm in Calabar. I've been here since the 5th of January. Wait, uh, you've been here since the 5th? Yes. Since of, my birthday of January, day? yes. Filming a new... Oh blockbuster movie right here in the city of Calabar mm. um, and it has been hectic trust me we've been traveling all around the state we went to Ecom, went to Abukim, Waterfall, uh, went to Creektown, been going to Creektown to film by boat uh, tomorrow we go to Akamba you know to wow. film it's yeah it's, it's, a it's a whole experience guys well, trust it's, me. it's part of the business Absolutely, right. I love it. And the money is good. Is the money good? Is the money good? Uh, the money is good. Yes, the I money is very good. Now. I mean, you can't pull me out of Lagos for a month, man. You get it. <laughs> gang, gang, the bag has to be full, bro. <laughs> but talking about money, like yeah. I want to get into acting because I'm, I'm, I need to be, I need to make money. Okay. But on the other hand, yeah, if you look at what's like, you have to give me if you go. Uh -huh. What's like the highest you have been? Out first, what's no, the I can't tell you that. No, like just because I sign, you know, I sign non disclosure. Yeah, even in yep. the so I'll, 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 yep, I will. Um, okay, just give me a random figure. Like, somebody can actually make this much, somebody can make this much. Right, you can make as much as. Fresh. I've heard people have made. I mean, people have made as much as 15, 10, 15 million from one project. Oh, one yes. Um, in Nigeria. Yes. Are you serious? Yes. You know, so it it depends on the project. It depends on your 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 star power. It depends on your star pool. It depends on what you bring into the project. Um, oh. Yeah, it depends on on the production. You know, Netflix, um, Amazon, these foreign streamers are big hitters. What um, you had your highest paid job yet? Yeah, because I know it's going to make like 100 million, 200 million. You're not thinking then, it's like you have maybe three. <laughs> <laughs> when you had like your highest paid, what was it like for you? Like when you got the contract, when you got the call, when you did the whole contract signing and all that? So, what so, was it like so the you? thing is, first of all, I need to differentiate between, you know, so I'm, as an actor, I'm also an influencer, a brand influencer. So um, there's acting in Nollywood. Okay. And then there is pushing or influencing for a brand within the Nollywood space. So um, so as, as an actor, of course, you need to learn how to, you know, yeah, and cut in between the lines. You can present yourself as an actor and also a brand influencer, and that comes with a whole lot of money. Now, what I've said, and figures I'm pulling out right now are just for acting. Okay. Brand influencing, totally different. Okay. And yeah. we're gonna come there. Okay. For acting, when you got the highest, mm -hmm. what was it like? I mean, I know, I feel I, well, like... Let me say this, okay. right? Let me say this, that um, so far, this project I'm on right now has been one of my highest ever, you know. We're, we're making it. Yes. We're doing and, this in Calabar. <laughs> tell them. You have to tell and, them. And it's great because I'm starting off the year like that, which is a great thing. Um, um, and I'm excited about the story. The pay is great. Um, 
you don't tell me how you felt now. I, the truth is, let me tell you something about me, right? I'm about the process. Money really doesn't get me excited. Oh like my that. God, please that's money the kind get of me person, excited. That's the kind of person I am. I'm about the process. I'm about the work. Work get, gets me excited. You know, when, I, when I'm doing things that really? I don't usually do. So it's the process that motivates you, not necessarily the, Absolutely. the bag, not the no. money. No, no, the process. Okay, if I wanted, if I, want, if I was driven by the money, I wouldn't quit engineering. I wouldn't quit all like that to do Trailer. to do entertainment. Trailer. You know, I'll be chasing money. I'll be doing things that you know. True, but that that being said, back. that being said, you actually quit engineering to do this. Was there a point in time where you were like, why in God's name did I even quit engineering? What am I doing here? And at that point, what mm -hmm. happened that you found yourself in that position? You want to know the truth? Yeah. Never. You're I've never. Good. I have never looked back. I've I never regretted. You. Absolutely. Like oh there were times God. when I, I, I had quiet moments or times that I uh, when I didn't I was looking for jobs, but I, I have never ever regretted quitting um, oil and gas. For, I, have I missed it? Yes, I've missed it, but not regretted quitting it. I've missed the stableness of the income. I've missed you know all of that. But I have never regretted quitting oil and gas for, for, for entertainment. This brings me fulfillment. I'm happy. I'm inspiring people. You know, it, it's a great life. Just, I'm living my best life. Yes. Okay, speaking about living your best life now, I know it's not been so rosy. There are some roads that they've given you that maybe you were not very pleased with, or in the process, you probably had some embarrassing moments. What has been the most Embarrassing moment on the set, or yeah, it's embarrassing moment on the set. There was a time, there was a time a while back that I played a um, a younger actor who was in love with an older, like a cougar relationship. Yeah, like a cougar relationship, and and and, and it's not the men's club; it's some other project. Oh, and okay. yeah, and um, huh, huh, two things happened. Well, I wouldn't say the, the other one, but, but, but what happened was I, I, the director I was working with had made me trust him. He's like, no, Daniel, you know, we want your underwear. We want you in your underwear. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm wearing briefs, right? He's like, hey, yeah, it's fine. You know, that's, that's what I want. It. Don't worry. It's going to be great. You're going to love it. I'm like, okay, fine, fine, fine. I act in my briefs, right? Fast forward to the day of the, um, the day of the premiere. Premiere, yeah. We're in the cinema, I'm watching myself on TV, and there's a shot on my crotch. Oh. And this thing was bulging, <laughs> and I'm like... What? Wait, did you see what I'm bulging? Like, why? I'm like, why would anyone... Emphasis. Why would anyone do that to me? Like, I felt so embarrassed. Oh like, and, it made, and the thing is, it didn't make any sense. Like, it didn't like even, nothing, nothing to do with, to do with the story. <laughs> this guy decided to just... Focus on my crush for nothing. <laughs> oh my god, what's the movie? What's the movie? I'm just asking, like, so really? people can actually go. <laughs> You're really asking me a lot. <laughs> not every time we get to see that. No, it's okay, screen. don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. You'll be fine and with it's that. not men's spot. No, it's not. It's not men's spot. And you don't want to tell us. Just drop it. Like, keep it just. No, I trust me, it's not one of those things I'm very proud of, so it won't, it, I wouldn't I would say anything. Okay, yeah. okay, looking at your life right now, especially knowing uh, where you started from, you talked about your parents yesterday, mm -hmm. and I think you should give us a little insight about that. Um, growing up, your yeah, parents, I, your dad, your mom. Yeah, I said I was born, born into a military household. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad was in the army. Um, I yeah. So I said I was born into a military family. My dad was in the army. Um, I was born in Jaji, Kaduna State, uh, and I think I was one year old when my father was arrested by the government for um, um, for allegedly being implicated in trying to overthrow the government in a coup. A, a, yeah in a coup in a military coup and um, and yeah he was arrested and put in prison and sentenced to death by firing squad and then that was commuted to life imprisonment later and then a few years later my mother was going to visit him in prison and she had an accident and she died 
you know, that just threw the entire family into chaos. My family was split. My two brothers were shipped to Joss to live with my aunt, and my um, sister and I were shipped to Benin to live with my parents. And yeah, so that's how I grew up, living with my grand, living my grandparents rather as my parents. And a few years after. My uncle, who lived in Lagos, came to pick us to live with him in Lagos. You know, so that's pretty much my uh, my experience. And then eight years later, my father was released from prison um, by the. I um, heard the news about your mother. Oh yeah, I heard about it when he was in prison, was heartbroken and everything. He wrote a book about it. The book is called Another Testament. I said I was going to give you a copy. I will get a copy. Yes. Another uh, Testament. Yes. Yes. Wow. And. Um, and How it was released, was released eight years after, like, somebody... My sister, it was like... Um, so, so the thing is, the presidential Please. committee on prerogative of mercy sat on his case and released him. Okay. But he wasn't granted amnesty, he wasn't given his rank and entitlements back, he was just released, right? That was in 93. And then fast forward, 2020, the year of COVID, uh, great president, President um, Mohammed bin Tuari, granted him presidential pardon and restored his ranks and entitled his rank and entitlement. And oh, wow. yeah, that, that happened almost how many years? Almost what? How many Twenty decades? something years. Oh yeah, more than a decade. Oh, like, I would say twenty something or thirty something years later. I think it happened eighty five. And he was restored in 2020. Oh, wow. So that's like 30, 30 some, 36 years later. Yeah. Okay, so you did wrote a book about it. Yes, you did write a book And uh, I'm sure, do you guys have like that relationship with you? Oh, too? yeah, I love the man. Yeah. Um, still alive. Yes, he is still alive. Um, he doesn't even need to tell me. I go to, I, every time I visit him in his house, in his home here in Calabar, he has all these old albums, you know, so I go and just flip through and I'm like, wow. Very, very you know, very like, oh, okay. uh, really did wish I could grow up. Of course. Um, I didn't really, since I was born when he left, I really didn't, I didn't get close to him. I was closer to my mom because I was, at least I lived with her till I was five when she died, and then I'm even closer to my grandparents, my late grandparents, yeah, so um, I had to learn to love my father again, I had to learn exactly. to accept yeah. him as a father figure in my life again, so all of that was, was an interesting process of, um, of coming of age for me. Another test you have to say, yes. if you were to describe your life as a book right now, what would yeah. you give it? Even about it? Yes, I would call it telling my father's story. Why? <laughs> um, like your entire life right now. My life up, up, up until this moment. Yeah. Yes, because um, it's interesting because growing up, I grew under the shadow of the man. I grew up knowing that my father was this hero, blah, 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 who went to prison, who survived death, who came out. And then when I met the man, he was an ordinary man with flaws, with, you know, with, with, with okay. flesh and blood and all of that. And it was disappointing for me, but I had to learn to love him. I had to learn to um, accept him as my father. I had to learn to see the strength even in his weakness, you know, and, um, and Becoming an actor, and becoming a filmmaker was a process of saying, you know what, I've heard about these amazing stories in my life that I want to tell. You know, I've been inspired by stories I was told about my parents, told about my mom, told yeah. about my dad, and I'd love to tell those stories one day. And um, honestly, I started to write some of these stories. I started to put a script together, and I have this amazing script of, of his life. Mm. And I get to play it, mm. and I get to play my father in the story. Okay. So, um, so yes, yeah, so I'm working all of that together, and for me, oh, it's just a whole journey of walking in my father's shoes and telling his story to inspire people. So telling your father's story is what's going to happen. That should be. Well, up until this point, I don't know what the future holds, <laughs> but up until this point. Well, that should be a movie. What do you think? Absolutely. Then? A movie title. So we already have a movie title. 
I'm going to be featuring in that one. So <laughs> really, what role are going to play? It would be good to play my mom. Yeah, I think your mom would do. Like, wow. I really, I'm feeling her vibe right now. Ooh, Hearing yes. you say it. And then you also made mention of something which was like your last memory of how, how she. I mean, like, I need a child, like, I was like, okay, you know what? Let me go and see my husband, the love of my life. You know, I, I think I want to play that. Oh, wow. So, and we will play it in Calabar. Don't forget, like um, show everything. I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll, we'll Stanish and I'm gonna play your mother in that movie and it should be in cover. So uh, very quickly, apart from that, uh, you have been married for five years and a lovely wife you have to see. Of course, amazing kids, you need to go see them. Riri, Riri, is it Oreo? Yes. Yeah. She um, had a birthday some days yeah. ago. She's a Capricorn, I'm fifty-seven. <laughs> Love you, baby. Uh, we've seen how um, uh, especially uh, marriages in Hollywood uh, industry, we've seen how, and even entertainment industry in Nigeria, we've seen how it has been some persons, you know, who have been married for years, even, you know, short years, long years, and then you just realize how everything just, you know, turned upside down, people coming up to pull themselves out, this happened, that happened, and it's one too many, we all are very busy about it, but, I mean, I know you guys are not perfect, but, what exactly would you say? I know people have different reasons, but what would you say? What would you say is wrong or might be wrong? Well, I think um, I think we haven't learned how to love properly. I think we're still very selfish and self-obsessed. Um, it's true that you must love yourself first before you love other people. Absolutely. But in loving yourself, you must also understand that you are not the center of the world. Okay? Yeah. Um, living like you're the center of the world is would only cause you hurt. You, know, you must understand that the golden rule is do unto others what you, what you would like to be done to you. So if, as a couple, I look after your interest as... I would like to be looked after and you look at, after my interest as you, if you're a couple, for example, yeah. and you look after my interest like it was yours, yeah. Yeah. then it'll be easier that way. I mean, we will have challenges, but just the mindset of looking out for the other person mm. is key. But most of us go into, into, yes, into relationships self-obsessed me this, me that, this, this, this is that. Even when people offend people, you know, when you offend each other in a relationship, it's, oh my goodness, look what you did to me. How dare you do this to me? How I'm so hurt, how I'm so broken. And yes, you know, you can look alive that way, but if you do approach life that way, it's, you'll suffer a lot, you know. But the flip side of that is to be more, outward in your disposition and say yes i've been hurt but how would i like to be treated if you know i hurt someone how would i like to respond if i was the one on the receiving end yes, it makes the world a better place oh wow oh that's a different approach that's different Sarah. So what big advice do you have for those persons going into um, Nollywood, of course going to be a celebrity, being married or going to get married? How can they survive that, I don't know, should I say curse hovering around them, some Nollywood marriages? Uh, being an actor is a job like any other job. Uh, I tell people that if... If I were a gynecologist, mm -hmm. right? So people often ask, oh, how do you cope? You're kissing women every time in your life. You are kissing. Ah, if they kiss, God. What the God in the If you don't kiss. So I tell people that if I was a gynecologist. Ah, let's talk was, about the kissing first. Okay, we'll get there. <laughs> if I was a gyne, right, I would be, you know, looking up. Um, the female anatomy a lot yeah. that be you know Being looking at in intimate parts of, of women, women a that. lot and studying it and doing mm -hmm. all of that but it would be a job right that's the same way I, I consider acting and being in romantic roles it's a job you know I don't try and get emotionally attached after I'm done with the job does it happen yes it does my responsibility to detach right after I'm done with working that's with a huge responsibility people. oh yes oh yeah ah. it comes with the job 
come to the profession. Um, so my advice is it's a job, work hard at it, understand the ins and outs of it, um, be honest with your spouse, exactly. be open with yeah. your spouse. When you're in trouble, she's the person that can help you or he's the person that can help you out of the trouble. Has there um, been uh, one trouble that probably really stunts the yard? Her. Yes, there were a few times we've had difficult moments, wow. but we've dealt with it. I mean, that's got to I'm do with your role. To your role. I'm not at liberty no, to discuss role. that. Get, eh, like, I'm telling you now, I'm not at liberty to discuss Okay, which it. role? Which, which? I'm not going to say. Uh-uh. <laughs> why, why are you so hard on us? Like, now, I thought we're besties. <laughs> So it's uh, yeah. So it's it's because you because you know you guys are in it together. You have to Discussing. deal with it yeah. together. You know and um, be, quick, be quick to forgive. Trevor. Really quick to forgive. Um, be quick to also don't take yourself too seriously. You know. Um, oftentimes we take ourselves way too seriously. That's why when we make mistakes, we're like, oh my god, you know. <gasps> <laughs> Look what I've done! No, come on, you know, get over it. Yeah, get over it and move on. You know, um, yeah. What ritual do you do before you go on set? Now, I know some persons have to like, oh, um, apart from you learning the role and getting the role, I know some persons will have to maybe pray, like really pray. So about school on some days fasting, praying for they get into that set. I know some persons will have to do like really good sets with their spouse. Hmm. Yeah, it's like a ritual, you know, for them to have like a successful set time or something. Oh yeah, some hmm. persons do it. So what's the ritual that you get to do? Like you're coming into Calabar now, you're coming for a job or you're maybe in Lagos. What's that ritual you have to do apart from learning the script and knowing your role? Um, apart from learning the lines and doing your research, what ritual do I have? Um, I talk to people I love, talk to my family, get myself in a good mental space. Because when I'm when I'm when my energy is up and I'm happy, my creativity peaks. That yes, you know. So I, I I talk to people video when I'm away from my family. I video call them and talk to them. Um, I also go quiet, you know, you know okay. go to find my center. Mm. You know, go quiet. Um, I listen to music. If it's an yeah. emotional scene, emotional roles, I listen to music that can get me to that place. Um, on this set, because I've been away for quite some time, my wife surprised me. She came, she flew into Calabar and just surprised me on set. And I was like, I was getting ready to roll like this, and I hear, surprise! And I look, I see her, I'm like, Are you serious? It's like small, and I'm like, I'm a character. <laughs> to um, let you do like 10 questions. Hello, my name is Daniel Etim Effiong and I'm with my new bestie, Dollars, on Dollars TV, answering 10 questions with Dollars. I think my worst Valentine's Day experience was when I had no Valentine. <laughs> um, I don't know, I, I just, I, I think I was in, uh, it, was a, it was a dark time in my life, I, I had no significant order, yeah. My best Valentine's Day experience was probably last Valentine, where I surprised my wife and took her to this beach house and had a masseuse, had a chef, and then we took a boat to a hotel after that and spent the night at the hotel, it was fun. Rose, flower. <laughs> mm. 
most shocking news I've heard about myself. Most shocking news I've heard about myself was that I was <laughs> a 50 year old Nigerian athlete. Yeah, because the guy's name is Daniel Effiong as well, and I was introduced as the guy on a TV show, and I'm like, what? No, I'm not that guy. I just laughed and said, no, that wasn't me, that was my namesake. My most memorable moment on set uh, would be... Uh, would it be would be the day I was surprised by my wife, maybe. <laughs> if I wasn't an actor, I'll be a chemical engineer. I would maybe be a businessman owning hotels across the world. That's difficult. I would I'd kill Nancy Sime because she murdered my best friend of Blood Sisters. So payback time, girl. Um, I would uh, I would kiss I would kiss Ini because Ini is my friend. Ini is my very very good friend and. And I'll marry Sharon. Oh, yeah, that's because she's right. single. That's because Sharon is single. Because oh, Sharon is single. I don't want to be marrying someone who's already married. No, she's not married. You killed her already now. You killed Nazi. Yeah. Who's that one person? Viola Davis? Uh, I just think she's really, she's a really strong performer um, and she comes across like a mother hen, you know, carries everyone along. She's not the kind of person that would just perform and leave you in the dust. You know, she brings you along with the performance and it would just be such an honor to be in her presence. All right, sing to the rescue, Five Man Gang, myself. Uh, Mofet Duncan, Kunle Remy, F.I. Wara, and Mauli Gavor. Uh, what role would they play? Yeah. F.I. would be the driver, he knows his way around town, he's a good driver. Uh, Mofet would be the explosive guy because he knows people, so he knows how to connect me with all the people that would give us the, you know, blueprint of the place and, you know, connect me with the explosive guy, all of that. Um, Kunle will be the guy with the guns, you know, pa 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 all guns Everybody blazing. Uh, Maoli will probably be the IT guy, you know. My name is Daniel Etim Effiong, right here in Calabar with my new bestie, Dollars on Dollars TV. Keep watching.